13.5, solving trigonometric equations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve trig equations. And to do that, the main thing I know is your unit circle. So I have the table set up right there. I'm going to solve these triangles. We have the new unit circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve trig equations. So let's talk about the process of doing this. So 1, solve like normal. So what do I mean by that? I mean if you have one ver function, one trig function, just trig, just solve. If you have more than one trig function, or if, what we do there is we factor, set equal to zero and factor. Step two, use all students state calculus. to find the quadrant we're going to use. And three, either use triangles or table to find the angle, to find angles, which is the answer. So that's the process. One, we're going to solve like normal. So if you have one function to solve for it, if you have more than one, like I have here, I have two. I got a factor set equals zero, or set equals zero factor. Then we're gonna use all students to take calculus to find what quadrants we want to talk about. Where does, and then, then once we do, you triangle the table to find the actual answer. So let's start here. So look at this one. There's more than one trig function, so I got a set equal to zero. Look, that's already done. Now I got a factor. But look at what they have in common. They have a cosine in common. So I can factor it out. So I got cosine theta, sine theta minus one half equals zero. Then we can solve this like normal. We split and solve. So cosine theta equals zero and sine theta minus one half equals zero. So now I gotta solve this side. Try to get sine by itself. Sine theta equals one half. Now let's solve this one first. So step two, since I got I solved like normal step one, step two, use all students to take calculus by the quadrant we're talking about. So I'm going to go like this, all students take calculus. I'm trying to figure out what quadrant is my answer going to be in. Now sine is equal to, sine is, I'm doing sine right now, so all students take calculus, right? Only A and S is positive when you're doing sine, the other two are negative. My value here is positive, so I should be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Next step, let's find the angle. Now I'll do the table first, right? So my sine equals one half. So look at the table right here. So sine, why is it? So oh, there we go. Sine, where does sine equal one half at? 30 degrees, right there. So I know this has to be 30 degrees and 30 degrees. So if I find this angle in degrees, like it asked me to, it's going to be 30 degrees up. And remember the way to find the spot right here. This is 180, and you're 30 degrees back. You haven't reached it yet. You're off by 30, so 150. Those are my two answers for sine theta equals 1 half. I still got to solve this one. Where does cosine equals 0 at? Well, look at your table right there. Cosine equals 0 at 90. So according to the table, it's at 90. Now, it's a little tricky. Because she could throw two spots. If he goes at nice, you're also you go to 270. But why isn't that an answer? Because it only wants from 0 to 180. So actually, I don't, I don't care about this. I just care about this, this, and this. And that's the process. Right? So you, if there's more than one, you have to factor it, split it, split it, solve each one separately. Sine theta equals 1 half. How do I figure out where that happens at? All students take calculus. Okay, we're doing sine, and it's positive. Quadrant 1 and 2. Then you either use a table, one half right here says 30, so 30, 30, or you use Sogotoa. In that case, it would have been like opposite is one, hypotenuse is two. You have to know that's a 30 degree triangle. And that's kind of the idea. Let's do more. Now, this one, let me change this. Oh, crap. Um, let me change this a bit. Let's do a more basic one before we do that one. Let's use two cosine 
theta plus rad 3 equals 0. So let's solve this. Now notice how there's only one trig function this time, so I'm just going to solve for cosine. It's a more basic one. You know, the factor don't do any of that. Just solve for cosine. So let's subtract rad 3 from both sides. I get 2 cosine theta equals negative rad 3 divided by 2. So cosine theta equals negative rad 3 over 2. So remember, i got to solve this. So first step, next step, all students take calculus. In this case, we're doing cosine. I have a cosine graph. Cosine is positive at C and at A, because A is always in C stands for cosine, so it must be negative at these two. Now look at my graph. Look at what. So next positive here, negative there. I have a negative value, so I'm going to be in the negative ones. Quadrant three and quadrant two and quadrant three. Now again, how do you get the angle? Because what we need to find out next. Two ways. You can do the tape. You can do the table where you go. Okay, here's my table. My cosine is negative right there over two, so we'll go for right there over two right there. Go to thirty. So these are thirty degrees. That's way one. It's using the table. If you're gonna use the, if you're gonna do the using um triangles, you go Sokotoa. This is rad 3 over 2, rad 3, this is 2, rad 3, 2. That makes this side has to be 1, which makes the angle 30. So again, that's how you're doing if you're using triangles. If you're doing the table, you just go to the table, go backwards, to figure out the angle. 30. Okay, so now I've got to find our answer. So remember the way this starts off, you start here at 0. That's supposed to be a straight line. And you go to 180. You're 30 short, so 150, and you're 30 more than 180, so 210. And it'll already be done, except for the fact they wanted radians. So yes, you can convert if you want, but that's the, that's the baby way. The easiest way to do some radians is, let me rewrite it because it'll make it a little easier. The easiest way to do radians is this. 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6. So we make this 6 over 6. 1 less. 1 less is 5 pi over 6. And 1 more. And that's how you do in radians. Same idea, 30, 30 degrees is the same as pi over 3. So 6 over 6, 1 less, 1 more. Pi over 6, as I say. Let's do another one real quick. Solve 2 sine theta for x equals negative 1 for all values of of theta measured in k. So for this, they want infinite main solutions. What you do is this. You solve like normal, but then add plus 2 pi k. Because remember, the the um, period of a, of, a, of sine is 2 pi. So you just keep on going around in circles, cultural angles, over and over again. So that's all that is. So let's do it. So let's solve for sine, right? Divide by 2. Sine theta equals negative 1 half. So I got to figure out what sine equals negative 1 half at. All students take calculus. Sine is positive at A and S because A is for all and S is for sine and negative down here. This answer is negative, so draw a triangle with a negative portion. So again, I don't care how you do this. So Gotoa, opposite is negative 1, how about this 2? You figure out it's 30, or look at the table, 30. Either way, you get this 30. So again, then how do we answer this? You can do it in degrees range. We'll do it in degrees this time. You start here, always at zero. This is 180. I gotta go all the way around, so I'm plus 30. So 210. I'm gonna do sandy for this one, right? All the way around here. This is zero and 360, but you're 30 away. So 330. If we're just in radians, if kind of like we did last time, be pi. Right here, be pi six over six because it's thirty. One more, one less. Over there, twelve pi. One more, one less. So that'd be the idea. Now I wanted infinitely many solutions, so my answer actually should be this: two ten plus two pi k. And what that does is it makes you go around in a full circle to hit two pi ten to average two ten again. So let's keep on going around. So that's that one, and then we also do the same thing with two thirty plus 2 pi k.
So guys, yeah, this means you go around full circle. Next time you want to hit it. Next step, let's go some. Let's go deeper in this. Now, this next part is about how about extraneous solutions. So what's gonna happen here is so many answers not gonna work. Keep in mind, like, a, so how does this happen when sine and cosine are more than one or negative one? Those two going to be between one and negative one. Unit circle. I right? think of sine of graph of sine and cosine. Max is one, negative one. So if anything for sine and cosine, if you do anything bigger than one and negative one, it's not gonna work. It's no solution. So now we understand that sine and cosine has to be between negative one and one. So anything bigger than that be undefined or no solution, we have to solve this. Now see this problem here? Notice how it's kind of it's in a factor form, it's in it's in quadratic form. So the factor. So a lot of times what I do, I just ignore the sign. So it's two x squared minus three x minus two. Then factor it, so then we multiply these there's a number from so we multiply those together. Negative four x squared. Two things that multiply you get four but add to get negative three. So negative 4x and 1x, plug it in for the middle, so 2x squared minus 4x plus 1x minus 2. Factor by grouping, these have a 2 in two x in common, x minus 1. These have nothing in common, so you put a 1 on the outside, x minus 1, 2, 2, for both of these, there we go, sorry about that. Factor that, x minus 2. 2x plus 1. All right, so now it's factored, so now I can plug the signs back in. It's going to be sine x minus 2 and 2 sine x. There we go, not too ugly. <laughs> Equals 0. Right, so all, again, all I did was factor that. How do I factor it? I just ignore the signs, made them like x's. Factor like normal, then plug your signs back in. So now we're going to solve this, we're going to split and solve. Sine x minus 2 equals 0. 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. So I get sine x equals 2. And then if I was solving this one, subtract 1 divided by 2, sine x equals negative 1 half. So sine x is 2, you cannot solve. It's too big. You can try to, it's not going to happen. Right? Sine has between 1 and negative 1. Let's take a sine graph. Think of the fact that we're doing a unit circle. Right, so you can't solve it, no solution. This one we can solve. We've been doing it all day today. All students take calculus. Notice how it's negative. Sine is positive A and S. This is a negative, so it's going to be T and C. And then you can either make a also you can either make triangles and go opposites negative one and two, or you could look at your graph, your table and make it one half, so it's thirty. So again, the way we're going to do that, this is 180. And if you want to know what 30 is, it's 30 past 180, right? We're going this way, 180, and we're going to go extra 30. So 210. We're doing this one. All the way around would be 360, but we're 30 away, so 330. Those two are the answers. Now, if we look back at the top, Again, they wanted radians. So how to do that? Same concept. This is 30, so that's pi over 6. So you put this pi, 6 over 6. One more would be 7 pi over 6. If you wanted this one, if you double, you get 12 pi over 6. One less would be 11 pi over 6. So that's it in degrees, and that's it in radians. Same thing. Let's move on to the next one. This next one's gonna be tricky. So this one, if you notice, you have sine and cosine equals four. So there's no way I'm gonna be able to solve it. So like said, equals zero in factor because it's not gonna work so well. We actually have to use the formulas. You see sine squared here. We're gonna change that to one minus cosine squared plus two cosine squared. Just rewrite this part equals four. Now if you look at it, I could add the cosines together. And I'm going to get 1 plus cosine squared. Theta equals 4. And then I'm going to subtract 1. I get cosine squared theta equals 3. And then let's square root it to get rid of the square. I get cosine theta equals 
radical 3. Now, but rad 3, if you're not sure, is like 1.54. That is bigger than 1, so no solution at all. Okay, let's move on to some other ones. Now, that this one, next one is where it gets even harder. Now, they want you to use trig identities, so we're combining the, like the last few lessons here. So, to solve this, first I want to do is a trig identity. It's like here, right? Remember that the rule is, if you're not sure, the trick is switch anything that's not sine and cosine. So, this is going to be sine theta, cotan is cosine over sine, minus cosine squared. Now, here, the sines cancel. I'm left with just cosine theta minus cosine squared theta. Now remember the way we solve it, say you go zero is you factor it. These both have a cosine. And now you could split it and solve. Cosine theta equals zero. We'll talk about that in a second. And one minus cosine theta equals zero. Add cosine both sides, one equals cosine. So two ways to solve this. Right now that we have cosine theta and cosine equals one. You can use your table here. If you notice, cosine equals 1 at 0. So cosine equals 1 at 0. Right here using the table. And now where does cosine equals 0 at? So in this case, look at cosine. Where does it equal 0? Right here at 90. So by doing this one, it happens at 90. But it also happened, also known as pi over 2, at the opposite side. Negative, so which would be negative zero, which is still zero. So it happens at two seventy or three pi over two. All right. So again, given given a formula, you have to do in this case I do my little, little simplification. Then you can factor what they have in common, and then you can split and solve each one separately. And that's the key to this problem: split and solving each one separately. So a couple more just to practice some of our stuff. This one, right, if you remember, this one, my favorite trick is to move this thing to the top. So if it's a cotan on the bottom, it becomes a 10 on top. So let's just rewrite it. I got 10 cotan plus 2 sine squared equals 0. Cosine, sorry about that. 10 is sine over cosine. And we already have a cosine. These cancel, I just get sine plus 2 sine theta equals 0. And we're going to solve very similar to the last one. Factor what they have in common, they both have a sine. You have 1 plus 2 sine equals 0. We're going to split each one. Sine theta equals 0. 1 plus 2 sine theta equals 0. Solve for theta, sine. Subtract the 1. Now you get sine 2 sine theta equals negative 1 divided by 2. Sine theta equals negative 1 over 2. Remember, you're not done with these two. You still got to find where does that happen at. So sine of 0 is what we talked about earlier. Where does sine equals 0 at? I have the 0. But it also happens on the opposite side at 180. Where does sine equal negative 1 half? That one's a little trickier. You have to do all students take calculus. Sine, this is a negative value. Sine is positive at A and S, so it must be negative down here. Now it's your choice. You can either do triangles or you can use a table, right? So in this case, we'll other table because we have it right here. Negative one half, where, where does sine equal one half? 30 degrees. So it's 30. And again, we need the angle from here. Very important angle from there. So that's zero. If I go all the way to here, it's 180 plus another 30. So I get 210. If I'm trying to get all the way down to here, it's 360, but I'm 30 short. So 330. And that's that one. Next. So now this one is, how do we solve it when there's something inside like this? Parenthesis. Well, all the key is you ignore it till the end. So you just want to solve this like you normally do. So we're going to do all students. Take calculus. Now 
right, sine is positive to A and S. This is a negative again, so we're going to be down here and here. But look at the thing they gave me, rat 3 over 2. So again, if you want to do the table, we're doing sine rat 3 over 2 is 60 degrees. Or again, if you want, you can draw a triangle, blah, blah. blah. The sine is opposite of right hypotenuse, so like this. And then you got to find the missing side. So a squared, b squared, c squared. It doesn't even matter. You have rat 3 right there, opposite rat 3 is 60. That's what I meant to say. Ha. Uh, so you know, oh, if I have rad 3, it's going to open to a 60 degree angle. And like last time, find the angle. You're trying to go to here. This is 0. You got to go all the way to 180 plus an extra 30. 60, sorry. Because of the angle. So you get 240. If I was doing this one, all the way around to this line, that's 330, that 320, sorry. 300 and then you're like wait because you're 60 apart that's twice 300 right because that's 60 and this is 360 minus 300 order I had so get that now I'm not done because if you notice I didn't use the 2 that's now is where we're going to use this so how does that work well, the answers you got, this said equal to 2 theta. 2 theta equals 240. And 2 theta equals 300. Divide by 2. Theta equals 120. Divide by 2. Theta equals 150. We'll do a few more. So this next one. Right, so I just got to solve it. If you notice, they both have a sign, so you're going to factor it out. And that puts sine minus 1 equals 0. Same idea, we'll split it. Sine equals 0. Sine minus 1 equals 0. So you get sine equals 1. Again, a couple ways to do this. Table, where does sine equal 0? 0. Where does sine equal 1? 9D. Don't forget, this also has to be 180. If you're doing a triangle method, you got to keep in mind, where does sine equal 0 and 1 at? It's one of these points here. It's always be one of those points. So 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. If I was doing, so to have that, that's, that's how you do it by triangles. So you just you have your answers. Right, where does sine equal 0? Sine e, right here and right here, 0, 180. Where does sine equal 1? Sine e, where's 1 at? Right there at 90. That's the idea. Again, a couple more. 2 cosine squared theta equals 1. So again, notice there's only one trig function, so we're going to try to solve it. Let's divide by 2 first. Cosine squared theta equals 1 half. Now you might be thinking how to get rid of the square. Well, we square root it. Cosine theta equals square root 1 half. Now here's a tricky thing. Remember you can separate it. Cosine square root of 1 is 1. Square root of right 2, you can't. So I get this. And don't forget, square root is plus and minus. So actually here, cosine can be plus rad 1 half, minus 1 rad 2. My, it, either way works. So we're doing that table. All students take calculus. I'm going to use the whole table. So it can be there, it can be there, it can be there, it can be there. Because it's plus and minus. Now it's 1 half, 1 over rad 2, sorry. So let's write down one of our formulas. So ka. Or you can look at the table. But it's rationalized. Opposite hypotenuse one, opposite rad two. That's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So these are all 45. So again, you can either figure out each angle. That's 45. This is 180 minus 45, 135. 180 plus 45, 225. And then one eight, and then three sixty minus twenty forty five, which is three thirty five. You can also need radians. It's power of four. So it'll be one less three, one more five, eight, and that'd be seven and one or nine.
Okay, that's the last couple ones. This one, half angle, skip that one. This one, double angle. So how about this one? So again, notice how I have sine and cosine. I, I don't want to have two different ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this sine to data. If you remember the formulas I do give you, that is a double angle formula. It was on the last lesson. So we're going to switch this to two sine theta, cosine theta, minus cosine theta. Now we're going to solve like normal, right? So it's more than one function. We, it's a, so we say you do zero. We factor. These both have a cosine. And left with two sine theta minus one. Again, all I did was factor it out. So remember, if there's more than one trig function, say you go to zero, and then factor. And then we split cosine theta equals zero to sine theta minus one equals zero. Solve this one. Two sine theta equals one. Add one. Divide by two. Sine theta equals one half. Now again, I don't care how you solve this. Any way you want to do it's fine. Where does sine theta go one half at? Let's do all students take calculus. Notice this is positive. So I'm going to be at A for positive, right? All. And then I'm going to be at S because we're talking about sine. If it was negative, it would be down here. So then how do you figure out what angle it is? Well, if you're doing triangles, it's opposite over hypotenuse. And you got to know what triangle that is. That's 30. If you're doing the table here, where does sine equal 1 half? At 30. So 30 and 30. So my answers are 30. And again, I'm trying to get to here. This is 180, and you're 30 short, so 150. If you're doing radians, 30, I know 30 is pi over 6. So how do I do this? Well, it's going to be 6 over 6. 1 less, 5 pi over 6. That's how you do in radians. Oh, okay, so when does cosine equal 0? Doing the table where you gotta remember, oh, zero one, 1, that's one of these things. So we're just cosine equals 0 at? Well, this is 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Cosine's the x value because sine's the y value, sine e. So we're looking at these two. So 90 and 270. Also known as pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Next one. So another one knows how it's it's like a trinomial. So this one we're gonna factor. It's a little simpler. What two things multiply to get one, but add to get two? Just one. This is this is like factoring. Let's say it's like factoring x squared plus two x plus one. You just get x plus one, x plus one. Also known as x plus one squared. So if I wanted to solve this one, I'll just do ten plus 1, 10 theta plus 1, just like I factored it, equals 0, split it, they're the same one, just we got to solve one of them, 10 theta plus 1 equals 0, 10 theta equals negative 1. So again, how do we solve that? All students take calculus. 10 is positive at A and at T, because these have to understand, it's these two are negative. We have a negative value, so let's draw our triangles in the negative quadrants. And again, it's all about which one you're more comfortable with. When doing triangles, I'll make this negative 1 over 1. So, negative 1 over 1. Same thing. And I should, by that, I should know that's a 45 degree angle, because it's 1, 1, rat 2. If you're not doing that, look at your table. Here's 10, 1. So, it's to be 45 degrees. 1 is that 45 degrees. So my answer is going to be from 0, this is 180, right? I'm 45 short, so 135. And the same idea here. I go all the way to 360, but I'm 45 short, so 315. That's how I go backwards. Last one, and we'll stop. So this one, cosine 8 theta equals 1. Remember, don't overthink it. What you do here is you just do this and ignore it till the end. Just solve cosine w equals 1 or something. So we're just cosine equal 1 at. 
Having that 0 and 2 pi, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. And again, this keeps on going off forever and ever and ever. So, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0. That's from negative 1. Now again, we're doing, we're doing cosine. And cosine is the x value. Sine, e, sine, y value. So we're actually doing, where does cosine equal 1 at? That only happens here. So, at 0 degrees and at 2 pi degrees. So, let's rewrite it. My answers are, right, I just ignore now, I'm not going to do it. Is 0 and 2 pi, or is 0 and 360. And then you got to solve this problem for 2 for, Solve this problem for a. It's 5 by 8. a equals 0 and pi over 4. And that's it.